I'm catering Sandra's wedding on Saturday. Sandra's like my best mate since I was about 13. We needed something quick, very, very cheap, and easy. So I'm going up tonight, I'm doing all the prep from like half four, and I just wanted to go through a quick trial recipe. But because it's so quick and easy to make, we thought we'd do a live cook along video, so my average time is 12 minutes. See if we can make a lovely vegetarian. Very fast, Within half an hour. Also, don't mind the calf, a barbershop completely destroyed my hair. First thing I'm going to do, heat on. I want these pans heating up, especially because I've got a very, very bad electric oven. Second thing we're going to do is get this pan on. I know I don't normally use two pans. Because it's vegetarian, I say this a lot, I don't eat much meat at all. Um, I eat enough meat, um, but no, you don't have to stress about protein. I get a lot more calories from oils and fats and nuts and butter. I like butter a lot. Because I, I need those calories and I really, really struggle to meet the calories. But no, I don't have this obsessive trend with protein and meat. I don't drink any protein shakes, mass gainers. I buy one meat product a week and I make sure to buy the RSPCA approved or specially selected outdoor bread, rare breed. Go to a local butcher, a local farmer if you can. Yeah. Do your bit. The last thing we want is more animals suffering needlessly because of this fitness and gym goers addiction to protein. This is probably the most time consuming bit. This is genuinely what takes up the most amount of time is just standing and peeling. Yeah, no one likes that bit. No one likes that bit, man. Let's just edit this bit down and skip the clock forward. So, it's basic chopping technique. This is your basic style, okay? That's more French, that is more Italian. I was trained in Italian kitchens. And I also, can you see that? I cut the back of my finger off. See that? Got it. A little bit of common sense comes in handy. Thumb always stays back. Your hands are gripped. Your knife will never, ever, 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 ever cut your finger from there, okay? Keep your pinky back. I'm lucky with my broken finger. And you keep your thumb back and you pull your fingers towards your thumb. So, turn that over. Done. As you get better, you can start picking it up. Next, pepper. I've got half a red pepper. Now, red peppers and green peppers are exactly the same. They are not a different species at all. Essentially, this will grow on the plant first, and it's more bitter, it's got more tannins and more chlorophyll. As that ripens, the starch, or fruit and veggies, is it's an energy store for the plant and a vitamin and nutrient store, just like our livers and our fat. As that ripens, the starch in it breaks down, so does some of the chlorophyll and some of the phytochemicals, and it goes yellow. And through the stages, it goes yellow, then orange, then red depending on how ripe it is. Which is why red is far sweeter than green. Right. So, we need a little bit of both. Again, clunking it through. If you're not too confident with your knife skills, you can cut it like this. You're less likely to slip, because that is blunt slippy. But, my only issue is, when you do it that way, if your knife isn't sharp, see if I can do it with mine. No. This happens, and it doesn't go through all the way. So depending on how much sense you've got, use wisely. I don't want this pith. It's bitter. It doesn't taste nice. What's a pith? Pith. That is the connective membrane, as named by chefs, that holds the seeds within the plant. So it holds everything together. It's a pith. And it's not very nice. You're a pith. You're a pith. So, nice and hot. Nice and hot. Fantastic. Rapeseed oil, very important, okay? We've heard of mega threes our whole lives. We get them from fish, blah, 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 blah. Essentially, rapeseed oil, flaxseed oil, linseed oil, and um, this is called canola oil in America. There's three types of omega-3. You've got your EPA, DHA, and alpha linoleic acid. All of them are omega-3. That should have been sizzling. All omega-3 means is you've got a double-double carbon double bond Take your fatty acid, okay? So you've got your glycerol at this end, that's your carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, and then your carboxyl group, okay? So that's just your essential end. Then you've got a hydrogen and carbon tail, okay? So a monounsaturated means it's unsaturated at one point in the chain. That one point where it's unsaturated means it's unsaturated with hydrogen because there is a carbon-carbon double bond because there's a lack of hydrogen. So monounsaturated, one carbon carbon double bond, okay? Omega-3 means we've got our carboxyl group with the oxygen, then just carbon and hydrogen all the way along. 
means if you go one, two, three carbons in, there's a double bond there. Our body cannot synthesize that, so we must get it from our diet. Getting back to the original point, that's why I had the wrong heat on. Uh, you can tell we're live. Oh, definitely. <laughs> back. So our omega-3s are three forms. We really need DHA and EPA, but if we eat alpha linoleic acid... What? <laughs> Alpha, linical, alpha linoleic acid. That's an essential fatty acid chain that we can't make, okay? Right. That alpha linoleic acid, we can get that, but unfortunately sources from plants such as peanuts and rapeseed oil, I don't eat really any fish because I hate the taste of it. I've always hated the taste of it. I love fishing, I love cooking fish, but it makes me gag. <laughs> and it upsets me. It's a personal issue, okay? What I do is I eat more rapeseed oil and that gives me some of that omega-3, but unfortunately it doesn't match what we really need. So don't think you can get away with eating no omega-3 and omega-6 by just eating flax, linseed and ch chia seed and rapeseed oil. Make sure you're eating some oily fish. Sorry to get a vegans, I've got no problem morally with veganism. If you don't want to eat animals, I completely agree. But as from a nutritional and a biological point of view, that is why we endorse having oily fish in the diet. We need those forms of so omega-3. It also has omega-6, which is your linoleic acid, which just isn't alpha, which just means chain, six carbons in, double, double carbon bond. Double carbon carbon bond. It's just double, double carbon. Sounds way more fun than carbon carbon <laughs> double. That's literally just peppers and onions in there at the moment. Reasonably high heat. I'm going to turn that down a bit. Mushroom. I'm not going to add these in straight away because they'll turn to nothing, but again, to keep it safe, we're going to go take a little bit off. That gives us our flat edge. That's really unstable. That's not going anywhere. So again, thumbs at the back, down, 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 down. If it's unstable again, turn it over. These are chestnut mushrooms. These closed caps, they have a texture. They don't taste of much, but they don't have any chestnuts left. Go down, down, flat edge. I'm just going to rock through them. Also, we're doing two things to combat the lack of meat. It's not that it just provides protein and blah, 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 blah. People would normally make this with boring old chicken breast. I actually think it's better with a bit of frying steak. But you have to remember also, don't worry about the amount of veg you've got here, okay? Veg is extremely low in calories. Most of the calories we're gonna be getting is gonna be from the oil and from the carbs in the wrap. So what I wanna do is pad this out so I can have a really nice full wrap. But because of the architecture, first thing I'm gonna do is baby corn. The reason I've got this, it was on offer. Whatever's on offer, whatever's cheapest, that's most likely to be what's in season. Whatever's in season is most likely to be local. This probably isn't. Um, but when you see a glut of a certain fruit or veg in the supermarket, it's probably because it's just started growing everywhere. So you're supporting your British farmers, you're reducing air miles, you're producing CO2 pollution, it's cheaper. And also, the soil is right for that time of year. The soil changes in alkalinity and nutrient content. Nutrient concentration right. over the year. So if you eat it when it's in season, there's more likely to be the correct nutrients in the soil for that veg, meaning you're getting more of those nutrients from the soil through your veg in your body. That's why a strawberry in winter does not taste of anything. Uh, a strawberry in summer tastes like tennis. Tastes like what? Tennis. Tennis? Yeah. Next, our second texture point. Butter beans. This one is probably the most simple thing we're ever going to do. This is in unsalted water. I'm able to control how salty my food is. I don't eat any processed food. And if I do, I will admit it. I will care soon. Rinse that off. Don't bother getting a colander out. Be lazy. There's some bubbles there on the top. I've washed them away now. But sometimes you might get some froth there. That's just some of the bean juice. So I'm going to rinse these off. It's also mean it's going to reduce, remove that you know, grimy starch layer that you get on beans. Yeah. I want that gone. I want these to be able to dry off. This frying pan should be nice and hot at this point. <laughs> anyway, stick them straight in the pan, heat on full whack, and I'm going to walk off. I don't need to worry about those now. That's cooked down pretty well. As we already know, vegetables are called starch. So, when we cook down that starch, we break the starch down. This is starch, imagine a chain with links. A single link is a sugar, full chain is a starch. So as we cook it, the heat breaks that chain up and all of a sudden we're getting sugar from starch. 
it's now easier to digest. We don't have to put as much effort in because we can't really digest starch because of how massive it is. But it means it gets sweeter tasting. So we're getting nice, delicious, sweet onions and peppers now. Salt is not the enemy. Your RNI is four grams of salt per day. So you need four grams of salt every day just to keep your body functioning properly. The recommended daily amount is no more than six grams. You will get most of that from your produce and your food. So I'm adding some salt in here because the only way I really get lots of salt in my diet is from bread. But apart from that, I don't really eat much else that's uh, processed. So I don't know where I'm supposed to be getting salt from. So I do have to make an effort to add it into my diet. A little bit of pepper. Also, that salt is hydro... Ah! <laughs> salt is hydroscopic. You know what that means? So hydroscopic means that it draws moisture. So right. that's going to help suck the water out of the onions, and that's just going to help them cook down a little bit quicker and caramelise a little bit nicer. Oh, I'll get some colour in there. Mushroom can go in now. Mushroom's mostly water, so that'll cook down massively. A little bit chilly. If you don't want it spicy, leave the seeds out. I do. It's not actually the seeds that are the spicy bit, that's actually a misconception. Yes, they are slightly spicy, but it is actually the connective membrane surrounding the seeds. So you see that there? That's the spicy bit. So because you, when you remove the seeds, you typically remove that as well. It's been misconceived, but it's actually not the seeds that are the really spicy bit. I'm going to add some garlic into this. I didn't add the garlic straight away. Garlic has more sugar than onion. Really? Yeah, and it has more sugar than pepper. That's why garlic tastes sweet. So it means if you put your garlic in at the same time as your onions, it'll burn. Because your sugar is uh, going to start burning. And then when it burns, it goes bitter. And you lose the garlic. You know what I mean? That nice little resonating garlic yeah. hint through it. You just get bitter garlic twines because you burned your garlic. That's cooking down nicely now. I think it's been... I think we started at like 10 minutes. Yep, so it's been what, about 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay, my beans, give them a quick flick. Ah, <laughs> uh, that one took a while. Kids, don't ask your parents. Just got some tortilla out. I personally, I want to have it with a little bit of salad with this, but I don't personally really like iceberg or anything like that. Oh, it doesn't taste of anything. Cucumber, take that again, same grip. Safe edge. This in here, that's just pure water. So that's just going to make your wrap soggy. Cut that out. Nobody wants a soggy wrap. Nobody wants a soggy wrap exactly. Do they? This here is called a rock chop. Keep my nose down and I'll rock the knife. That's different to tap chop, where you literally. You can do it, but I didn't chop on my knife enough. Hashtag lazy chef. Right, spices. As it is Mexican, we're going for the basic Mexican spices. Oh, look at that. I sweated down gorgeous. That's what we want. Right now, that's only had salt and pepper. That'd still be gorgeous the way it is. Mm. That'd be lovely by itself. Cumin. For this much veg, around two tablespoons. I just use my serving spoon. Don't be scared of spices, okay? Once you've opened them, they start to oxidize, okay? Once you've opened them once and left them, they're not as strong as they were. You see that? Cracking on those skins. I would like to point out that is too much spice, but there was just so little left in the bucket. Just point putting it away. I'm a human. Got some lovely smoked paprika. That's gonna add a nice background to Very, 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 very important. Fry your spices first. Because when you fry them, what happens when you toast spices before you add them? They get sweeter. Not sweeter. They get more nutty, you know, and toasted, and they give that warmth, and they really let out all of their flavour. So just by frying them first, this is it's better to fry them in a little pan, but I can't bother to wash yet another pan. Especially turn all the heating on. Cooking these down first. Also, you ever had one of those like really cheap curries and it's really grainy? That's because they haven't cut the spices out, they've just added them straight to the pan. Tilt them back, tilt them back, tilt them back. There we go, there, nice and dried out. They're gonna be lovely, nice toasty little seeds to go in our wraps. You see there in the spice, this picks up all that moisture and it's not all dry and claggy like it was. 
I've had this tin literally my whole life. My mum gave me a fruitcake in it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely vine smell, it still smell like a greenhouse. That's what it should smell like. It just seems like everything in the supermarket seems to be getting less and less flavour. And just lasts longer and longer. It's a product of selective breeding. But unfortunately they've been selectively bred for longevity, not for nutrient content. If you're a chef, you'd selectively breed for flavour. If you're a producer, you selectively breed for longevity and product lifespan. Fortunately, I'm interested in getting more smart puree because I left it in the car. Got it. Okay, tomato puree also goes a bit bitter if you don't cook it out, and that's what makes it taste like a cheap child's pizza. So that's about dessert spoon. I think we're about done. What was that, about 13, 14, 15 minutes? Okay. This is literally just spinach. Back on what I was saying before, anyway, I don't use iceberg, I like baby spinach, because it's high in iron, it's high in your bee bits. Most importantly, it actually has flavour. Um, <laughs> take a bit of that tomato. Now, unfortunately, this isn't what I would normally indulge in, but I think I've got just about enough veg, and I like the textures. Wow. About two quid for the lot. Not bad, huh? Hungry. And that's a wrap. Thank you.